Hey, how's it going everybody? So today we're going to be doing a little bit of a test. So bear with me. We're going to work out some kinks. We're going to work out if, <laughs> if this works at all. Uh, this will sort of be like a little bit of a test again. So please let me know. Leave a comment below as well if you like it. Obviously thumbs up, all that cool stuff. But let me know uh, your guys' opinion on this. Um, so what I'm going to do for the speed, sped up video is you guys know that lately if you look at any of my, my feed at all from my YouTube channel here, it's all like multi-hour streams. And the reason for that is a lot of what I'm doing lately is Jessup King oriented and I'm trying my best to document as much um, that I'm willing to share with you guys in the creation and process of that uh, so that if you guys wanted to make a project similar uh, you know or there's some inspirational talks in there as well I hope uh, that some of you find that and the selfish reason too is while I'm doing those streams a lot of you guys come in there a lot of you ladies you come in there yeah some really awesome questions and what I dig about that and what I've always dug about that is not only am I able to help you out if, if I can that's great but there's so much value in people that listen to it after the fact and there's lots of people that they're not able to make the streams you know and by you asking a question it helps them because it might be a question that you have that you wish you could have asked and all that cool stuff right now however what that means is I can't um, do speed videos as I normally would and we're gonna get started here in a second I don't want to ramble too too much I ramble enough as is but I just wanted to give a little um, disclaimer where I've seen this I've seen this sort of workflow on other channels uh, sketchcraft is one KNKL if you listen uh, if you watch him uh, there's another gentleman I forget his name as well and what we're gonna do is it's just a sped up version of a recording from a stream of the work in progress and it's almost like what I'm doing now is like the narration that I would have before just a little bit more control I guess I can pause and, and zoom in and, and do little different things like that so we're we're gonna try it out bear with me and again please I uh, encourage you guys to leave a comment below and let me know what you think here okay so first and foremost um, this here is Iron Fist a Marvel character um, this was asked for uh, one of my patrons over on patreon and if you're interested by all means there's links go check them out and uh, we're gonna go through uh, sort of the, the creation of this that I had done during the streams okay but before that I'm just gonna show you the pictures uh, so we always start off with the silhouette especially for these sort of things uh, it just it makes uh, the, pr uh, the product not the product, but the the pr the process go much so much quicker for me because it just I can work out so many things quickly and I can see what doesn't work right away. Then from here we just break it down. You know, I know this might seem like a crazy leap, but this is where a lot of you guys and girls you ask me about like, hey John, how do I get better? Actually, I had this uh, one person just leave a comment on my channel today. Actually, and it's a great question. Is um, they were saying something about when they draw a character jumping at you when they try to draw the belt on the character they can draw the belt on them fine just standing straight but when it's foreshortened it, it's it's a, it's a hard thing to understand and what that comes down to is just a fundamentals problem that's all it is and you'll learn that as long as you're aware of that and the more you do what I'm showing you right here this this is uh, trying to understand form and the shape that's there the style and all that yeah like there's a giant fist in your face with this image but regardless I'm hoping that you can see at least the form is somewhat sound in there and your style or whatever you're, however you like to draw is going to just be like the window dressing or the frosting that you're gonna put on this okay so that's why this is super important this right here um, not even this really this is just this works for some people not everybody but this right here I don't it really doesn't matter who you are you usually get to a point somewhere along this line unless you're doing digital painting that's a different thing but for illustration this th this is the single most important part of the entire entire thing and then from here we do the traditional uh, line line art there ink the bad boy up and then we put some some shading on there some pretty simple stuff so uh, we're gonna start off with the video here the first one and I hope this works um, Let's try it out. So you're going to see my, my face here. It's going to go super fast. This is obviously during the stream. Looks like I'm having a good time. I don't know. Uh, so you can see we're already jumping into line art. Uh, I guess I didn't record the silhouette or the rough. Um, so let me just make sure that this is good to go. So hit play. Uh, and I'm sure I'll ramble. That's, you know, how the style goes here, right? So I'll try to talk as much as I can <laughs> while I'm clearly talking to whoever's in the stream and stuff like that so uh, what I've done is if you look on the right there I've made a new layer and on that layer basically what I'm trying to do is just have something set up so that everything's in like a folder setup so it's easy to always go back and to a previous stage or something like that uh, these brushes too if you're on patreon you get a, uh, all these downloads as well and the reason why I keep bringing that up is a lot of you guys are interested in, in the process and the workflow for sure that makes a lot of sense of course 
Um, but I've also on the right here, you can see my the way that I, all the the brushes are sort of sort of set up, and I've done them in the way that my process is, right? So at the top, you got a lifeless marker, which is basically uh, a different version of a silhouette, uh, and then it goes right into pencils, and then it goes into the line art, inking, and texture if you want, and then the color and stuff. And the reason I did that again is. On Patreon, if you guys are interested, check it out. The brushes are there, but I want you guys to be able to draw along with me um, for those that are interested in this workflow again, right? Um, and <laughs> it wouldn't be a video if I didn't talk about the DC Comics Guide to Digitally Drawing Comics by Freddie Williams. Uh, and this is pretty much the workflow that uh, he talks about in that book, and it's helped me out tremendously. That's why I continue to bring it up. I know it's not for everyone, but it has helped me big time. Uh, not only with just clarity of art, but more analytical thinking as opposed to how I used to work. And, uh, you know, when you're watching a lot of tutorial videos or process videos, sometimes it's a little harder to understand what brush settings and people are using and all that stuff. That's why I've wanted to have this in pretty much the exact same work order as you can see. Uh, and the settings are all locked. You can see a little wrench. It looks like a little circular wrench next to the, the brush type. That's just to let you guys know that everything is locked to a 600 DPI image. So you, the same brushes I'm using would be the same brushes you're using. Okay. So what I'm doing is just sort of like when you're doing your roughs, of course, I'm drinking Tim Hortons. What a Canadian. God. So <laughs> when you're doing your roughs, it's it's imperative to do a couple of things. One, the main the main goal out of the whole thing is to break like scribbles and things into solid form. So it's taking gesture into form, or if you're doing the silhouette, it's taking that silhouetted shape and moving that into a little bit more of a understandable form and form of that scribble, right? I, I feel like I'm just I'm saying things here that might just come across as a little bit, you know, <laughs> mystical in a way. Like you guys don't understand possibly. Uh, exactly what it is that I'm saying when, I, when I'm trying to bring these up. That's why I want to do more of these videos, just so you guys can continue to see the process of all, all this, as opposed to slogging through five-hour videos, you know? Actually, let me just increase the speed here, because this goes... We need to move this along. There we go. Nice and juicy speed. There we go. So, when you have all your scribbled form lines, gesture lines, whatever you want, you can see what I'm trying to do is pick the best lines, and that's something uh, that each and everybody else like you are going to draw it differently than I am you're gonna pick lines that I'm not gonna pick lines for right and it's almost a weird workflow it's like you're scribbling 10 lines to pick the best one and again you'll never know which one the best one is until you sort of just pick it and go with it and see where it goes and takes you right like here's a good example on the hand like I'm adding some lines in here you can see when I did the, the four fingers there I almost did like the outline version of them I actually didn't go in there and do each finger individually uh, and you can see around the hand all the finger gestured lines around it almost ghosted and uh, that, that's that's kind of what I'm talking about where it's you're not gonna know exactly what the hell's going on until you you kinda get brave and you, you kinda jump in there you know and you're kinda just doing exactly what it is that uh, that I'm saying there and here I am just what am I doing Look, oh yeah let's get some more coffee there buddy let's see if we can skip around a little bit here because we gotta get to the inking the lines are fine but we gotta get moving uh, the face was interesting uh, I remember I changed the the size of the, the lips because they're looking a little bit too too big almost like a Batman face I find with this kind of cowl look uh, and I wanted him to have sort of like a little smirk I don't know what it is I don't I haven't read Heroes for Hire uh, you know Luke Cage Power Man Iron Fist but Iron Fist always seems to me like that lanky kind of superhero and right away I usually default to like a Spider-Man kind of feeling when I'm doing that kind of stuff um, so you'll see we'll adjust it uh, and his head's actually pretty small and I was I was kind of talking about it on the stream as well uh, let me just move this along that uh you know, when I was drawing it, what I had to keep remembering or reminding myself is that I'm really pushing the hand forward, like almost like uh, One Punch Man. It's a great example. If uh, you guys have ever, please read that comic. Wonderful comic. And um, you know, you want to show what it, like everything is about telling the why, the story. You know what I'm saying? So power f or iron fist, right? It, this isn't. I'm not breaking the mold or reinventing the wheel here. But I wanted to show the fist is the most important part of him, right? So if I have the fist so far, like cl or so close to you, everything else has to get small to show the relation of it, right? So that's why 
you know, again, what I was saying, I'm usually working with a second. That's why he keeps me looking straight. I'm not reading the chat. What I have is a second window open on my second monitor, so I can look at that because it's zoomed out. So when I'm in here just sort of working close, I can quickly look over and see it pulled out. And that's when I was noticing when I would look that everything was like getting kind of out of whack. The head was looking a little too small. And it wasn't until I came back to the end and I was talking about it in the stream where I was like, you know, I'm going to wait a little bit just to see how it looks. And then I'll make the decision if I want to make it bigger or not, you know. And I'm glad we stuck with it being small. Uh, once it's done, it actually came out pretty good, in my opinion. Um, so the face is there. So we're working on, like, the costume elements here. I don't know what we're opening. I'll just keep moving here. Yep, so you can see I'm working on the cowl. It's almost like the, you know, like the spawn kind of cowl and stuff. It was actually kind of confusing. I didn't understand how it was wrapping around him. And again, that's more of a form thing because if you look, this is the best part. Okay, this is exactly what I'm talking about. If you look at the, the scribbled blue lined um, cowl, what I had done is I gestured in the idea of where his costume was. And because I didn't figure out where the form of it was, like I didn't go and find like the, let's say the 3D model version of it around him. I didn't draw it and take that time. When it came time to actually do the line art, there was some guessing going on. And I was skipping around, but during the stream, I remember I was going in there and I was just, it's a simple thing. It's nothing that's too crazy, but sometimes, you know, like if you guys, let's say you draw Wolverine and you're drawing his like face mask, right? Sometimes it's super hard to like figure out what in the hell is going on with that. And uh, if you don't take the time, God, I talk a lot. Let's keep this moving, John. If you don't take the time to figure that out, you're going to have to either figure it out later on in the process, and if you don't do that, then you're going to always have something off with your with your piece or your image or whatever the hell you want to call it. There's just something off because you didn't take the time to figure it out. And here we're just going to put a, I think it's just a contour layer around it. Yeah. So let me pause this up here because I believe uh, we jump into a different, a uh, secondary uh, one as well. So this is where it might get a little weird. Let me try opening up another video. And I believe we jump into inking right away. So again, I apologize. Yeah, sweet. There we go. So we can just jump in right, right away. You can see it's been a couple days. This was the other one that we did. All I'm doing is getting things set up. Um, because we were doing this before we were doing Jessup King pages. So again, you can look. Uh, lately, I've been... Well, actually, let me just hold on before I say that. These um, images that I'm doing, they're not like comic book scale. Meaning, they are, but it's like um, a panel on a page. So this isn't like 11 by 17, 600 DPI. This is more like 3 by 5, 600 DPI. So the inking that I normally use is the one that you see selected. More so lately, the large inking, um, because I'm, I'm doing my best to have like an active awareness of the pressure that I'm applying with my hand. Uh, just a little sob story for you guys. Lately at work, um, I've been doing more design than actual art. You know, and I, I'm not. That's not to say that design isn't art, but I'm not doing what I, what you see here, right? So as I'm doing a lot of hotkeys, I've noticed that I'm using my pinky to hit like control. To con if you're using Photoshop, control is like your best friend, right? And what's happened because of that is there's been so much weight that uh, not so much. It makes it sound like I got like a 500 pound hand, but I I put continued pressure on my pinky uh, throughout the day, like for an eight hour shift, you know? And it's really wearing out my hand. And that's I, obviously my drawing hand as well, which which does suck. So what I'm noticing is that when I come home to draw, or in this case, I believe this was on a Saturday or a Sunday, um, I had to really, I just have to start being more aware that, uh, you know, life is gonna be life. And if you wanna keep drawing, you gotta take care of yourself. So. It's weird because like I'm used to like not even using a lot of pressure, but just enough, you know. And lately, because of the pain that's coming back again, it's like I have to be like super aware of what's going on, you know, and take care of that stuff. Because if I don't take care of that now, <laughs> who knows? I don't want to have to learn how to draw with my right hand, okay? So uh, here we are. Actually, you know what? This yeah, we can keep talking about this pretty quickly here. So what I wanted to do is, and what I was saying in the stream is, what I what I like to do with these Patreon rewards is experiment a little bit, play around with some stuff a little bit because I you know they go pretty quick. But when I'm doing like let's say J Jessup King or when I was taking a client work, it, there's a certain look that it is right that I have that clients expect or that I expect from my own project, and it's, it's very hard to sort of branch out and try different things. So what I recommend doing, and if you're, maybe you're just like a, I don't want to say a noob artist, but like somebody that doesn't have client work and you're just learning on yourself, on your own and all that, 
please, you got all the time in the world to do this, but for all my other professional friends out there that are working all the time, you know what I'm talking about, where it's hard to, f- like, not even just hard to find 30 minutes to experiment with style, but to want to experiment. You can always feel that you need to, and you, and you don't, right? So anyway, uh, in this example here, I, I loaded up Clip Studio right through Clip Studio Paint. I have a video on this. Please watch that if you guys haven't checked it out. Uh, it's a free resource for everybody that has a legit copy of Manga Studio 5. I'm not sure if it's just 5 or 5EX. Um, but either way, you can go in there and there's like, uh, like the community is insane. People just loading up. You can see right here, like, this looks like a Godzilla font. Downloaded that. Amazing. Amazing thing for Jessup King and all my sound effects sort of bubbles. But what I was looking for was just like a textured background or something. Just to put behind Iron Fist because he was lacking something. And we ended up downloading a brush. Uh, let me just move forward. You'll kind of see it. Maybe. Yeah, and what it was, was once I filled it with like a black, yeah, let me just back up just a sec here. You're going to see, as I, yeah, you see, it's like it's like a textured dot. And all I'm doing is varying the size and just tapping around on the screen. And I dug it. I thought it was pretty cool. It's a very illustration look, you know? It's very pen and ink, which was cool because I didn't want to go too into like the, the gradients or uh, what you saw in the beginning, which was just like starbursts, you know? Not, not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just I wanted, again, to experiment branch out you know see what because by doing this stuff right now for yourself and and for me when i go to bring i can bring some of these successes into or what i consider success into my client or my personal projects you know where i need to be just moving like deadline driven stuff you know and that's the point (laughs) the more i remember uh, a, a teacher telling me once you know once you uh go professional or once this becomes your job it is incredibly difficult to f- make time to study. That's why it's super important to do so, at, w- like now, you know, as you're doing it. So I don't know if I do I start ink in this one. Probably. Uh, let me just move along here. This one was fun too. This is a League of Legends character. I'm not sure who that is. Uh, so what we're gonna do is you can see once I I stop chatting. Man, I'd fire myself. I talk too much. <laughs> so I used the white contour layer that we did in the inking step, or the line art step, if you remember that. And I'm actually going to try doing this in future coloring for Jessup King. Because uh, anybody that colors, you know that you have to make like a, a like a selection around a character for your flats. Uh, the work's already done, and I don't know why it took me so long to kind of think of this. But what I'm doing is I'm just turning that white layer gray, in this case, and uh, my head's covering it. But I use the Copic grays. Uh, I'm trying to move away from the Copic shading, just for this, again, for examples, right? Because this is how I would shade uh, Jessup King. And this kind of, uh, I actually saw this on Sketchcraft, to be honest, and I've never worked like this, where it's, you feel something totally in shadow, and then you're cutting out the light. Uh, and I don't know if this comes from just working with pencils, <laughs> you know, growing up that way, or the way I learned how to uh, light things. But it was always like when I was working with traditional tools, the shadow's not there, right? So you have to draw the shadow in. And I've carried that with me uh, up until today, or like we'll say a week or two ago or whatever, when I started seeing this stuff. And, and again, uh, just experiment, try stuff. And it's a different way to, like, it actually, I was getting a little bit of a headache doing this because. Uh, I understand light and shadow. I might not get it right all the time, but I understand it to the point where I can, I feel like I'm effective doing it, you know? And this was like going the opposite direction. It was like, I'm adding light because I'm used to adding shadow. And you would think that it's an easy transition. And for the most part, it kind of is, but I found myself anyway having to think differently. So it was a great little uh, experiment. I actually enjoyed it one hell of a lot the way it came out. I feel like this sort of lighting might work with, like, if I'm trying to have a, a dramatic image or something. Uh, I don't know if this is appropriate all the time. You know, I guess it just depends on your light source. And I think it, it, it's a little too dark. We're going to lighten it up, and then uh, we just grab our... Uh, it's um, a blending brush, which is default to Manga Studio. If you just go into your watercolor brush, I believe it's water... I think it's watercolor, and it's just called like smooth watercolor, I believe. And I just sort of soften up some of the cell shading in certain areas. Uh, it's a different way of coloring as opposed to just using your airbrush first and then putting in hard cuts. Um, some of you guys might not even know what the hell I just said, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure we'll get it as we go along. If you guys watch any of the Jessup King coloring videos, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So like here where you get intricate de- details like his face, I was like, man, there's way too much shadows going on there, like right in there. And it's just a, it's an interesting way to work. So I believe, okay, yeah, we still got his chest. Let me just skip a little bit here. 
I think we're getting close to done here. And I do think it's too dark, and I, I end up changing it to like a light blue Copic, I believe, because I still like the tone um, that we downloaded of the Copic. So it looks like right there, like there, right there, bang. Just that switch, I felt like so, so... Um, confident in how it looked and it was it felt very good and i'll be honest you know the more i think about jess of king <laughs> and it's a colored comic and i love the color uh, and i'm learning so much doing that i look at this and i'm like man you know like there's absolutely in my opinion nothing wrong with this and you're able to just move along you know just move 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 um so anyway that that's just that's just me rambling so here you can see all i'm doing right there it's smooth watercolor comes default with mega studio i believe these are all the default settings you guys can just play around with this and check it out and i'm just softening up some areas and then like that's it and it's done and it creates such a visual interest in my opinion that it's it makes looking at the shadow work even better because you can go in there like ooh, you know like some it's interesting now it's not all just cell shading it's some blurred lines and some and we'll get to lighting and maybe if you guys don't know why you would do one or the other and it's i'm not just doing it for style there's a reason why i'm i'm picking which ones that i'm adding that to and the very last step that i do i'll just quickly show you as we go through here is um i was trying to mess around with gradient maps and a gradient map is just replacing your whatever uh, tone you have with a color so from white to black if you just had like a white to black gradient and you put like a, a gradient map over it that was like uh, red to green so all the white would be red all the black would be green it would hue shift all that stuff based on the tone and I realized what I just said there could it's so right there maybe this makes it a little easier for you to see it almost looks like you're just sort of grading over there but it's actually affecting the color and I, I really like that one too and the reason why I, this one was oh it's so choice I love it um, but, but the reason why I, I was kind of going in here I'm like it's a, it's a quick thing a gradient map right and I can just copy and paste this onto everybody's commissions that I'm doing and Again, this isn't necessarily 100%, I know I'm saying this, just for me to learn and experiment at the expense of patrons or anything. Uh, I always take my patrons super seriously. I don't know why I'm, I'm looking at it right now. What am I doing here? I'm showing stuff. But the pa patrons to me are obviously the first and foremost on the list of people that I, I thank every day and any content that I put out for them. So when I want to give them just a little, a little extra spice, you know, a little extra sizzle. The problem that I came up with is, man, let me just, I can't talk while I'm looking at myself this is weird uh, I'll just pause it here but the reason why I refrained from doing that was uh, somebody had a really good comment where it was like well Iron Fist is technically green and as soon as he's saying that I'm like you know even though I love the way this looks it's a little saturated but I love this let's say somebody asked for the Hulk and I apply this on there it'll probably still work but maybe if it was green it'd be better and then that was adding another step I know this might just sound like I'm in my head, but I just didn't want to complicate something that was just meant to be what it was, you know? So I was highly satisfied with it. I loved the way it turned out. I went back to the gray, and I'll just close this up here, and, and we'll just look one more time. We'll just go through this just so you guys can see it again, right? Just, you know, for interest. So we started off with the silhouette, rough, line art, inks, and shadow. And here, just to get you guys a little, a little closer to the action. Right, and you can see the inking. It, it's pretty simple stuff, but I tell you, once you put like one pass of gray, it it just makes the thing pop. So anyway, thank you guys so much. This was supposed to be a speed video, but uh, we're working at the kinks. Twenty minutes seems a little girthy, but uh, we'll see what we can do. I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway, uh, and I hope you, you you learned something from it. You enjoyed it, whatever. Again, please leave a comment in the, in the comment bar below. I would love to have a discussion with each and every one of you. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please uh, consider liking and subscribing. And until next time, you guys, keep reading comics, keep making comics, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.